We live in a new era of SEO. AI is taking over. Google's trying to figure out how to see who is using AI and who is using a real person to write their content. Who are you? And you are trying to figure out how to rank first in Google for the keywords that are going to drive you revenue. In this video, I'm gonna talk about all of the kind of subtopics and things that you should be paying attention to inside your SEO program to make sure that you dominate your market. Hey everyone, I'm John Timmerman. I talk about the world's most exciting business sales and marketing strategy so that both you and I can grow our businesses together. And today I'm talking about advanced SEO, search engine optimization. It is quite frankly, the best digital marketing strategy for long-term growth and success because organic searches and earned media tied in with organic optimization is best because you invest in it and you maintain it. And over time, it can compound and snowball the results, traffic to your website, conversions to your website, purchases of your product, leads to your business, and all of that good stuff. So what are the common things, right? There's common departments or sections of SEO. There's off-page, there's on-page, there's technical, there's backlinks, and involved in here now are even social signals and digital PR, all funneling in to helping your website rank in a Google search. And even some subtopics in there are super important. Those subtopics that I'm going to talk about today are really where the value is when I in the when I'm filming this video in 2023. These are the things that we're paying attention to this year as the top most important things to drive revenue. Now, if you're watching this in 2023, depending on when it is, this is January. We're headed into a, a most likely a recessive year, a minor or major recession, depending on how things play out. And so companies all over are looking, how do we become more profitable? They're chasing profit and margin, not top line revenue. We just went through the past three years where top line revenue was exploding for most businesses. And now they're kind of caught in this place where they overhired, they over supplied themselves with inventory. And now they're trying to figure out how to offload that. We're seeing layoffs in some of the big tech companies as well as some of the small ones. We're seeing deep discounts on inventory for places like Target because they have too much of it. So we're seeing this place where companies are trying to chase this profit. And if you're trying to chase profit, then you're going to be looking at the most efficient ways to use marketing to drive sales, okay? Keyword is efficient. And that's what we're gonna cover in today's video is what are the most efficient ways to uh, tackle SEO. Okay, well, way number one is to look at things like branded search terms. Not things like, look at branded search terms because the branded search quantity or volume that you have, what I mean is the name of your business. If people are searching for it, it means you're popular. If people are not searching for it, it means you're not popular. And if you're not popular, you're climbing an uphill battle that's very challenging. It means you probably have your competitors that are much more popular than you, and it's they're at a huge advantage when it comes to SEO. Because if a company like Nike is sitting at the top because see people are searching for Nike, it's much easier for them to generate revenue from SEO. They don't have to chase the long tail keywords in order to funnel people into their website. But if you have a company, some unknown sneaker brand that is trying to make a dent in the market, they're trying to chase Nike, who already has this huge advantage of people just searching for Nike. So this smaller company is trying to target keywords like newest sneakers, best sneakers, most cost efficient sneakers, best sneakers for running. You know, they're trying to chase these things to introduce themselves to a potential customer. The brand, Nike, is at a vast advantage to unknown brand XYZ, which makes it much harder for unknown brand XYZ. So what does this mean? It means invest in your brand. Sneaker company XYZ should be doing social media, influencer marketing, digital PR, getting themselves out, affiliate marketing, getting them list in, listed in the best sneakers of 2023 categories getting their name out there so people are like, man, I've been hearing about sneaker company XYZ all over the place. I'm gonna go to Google to figure out all about them. Hence, your branded search volume 
goes up. And then you can start to make sure that you are ranking first for that brand. This also gets into branding because you want to make sure that your brand is sort of unique. If there are 15 other XYZ brands out there, even in other industries, it makes it harder for you to rank first if somebody is searching for XYZ. So if there's a B2B service company, if there's a SaaS company, a podcast, a TV show, a movie, auto parts distributor, if there's all these companies that are all named XYZ and your XYZ sneaker company, people probably are just going to type in XYZ as the brand. And if the auto company, the movie, and everybody else shows up first, they might get sick of searching for you if you're buried in the third page for the term XYZ. So this is where other strategies might come in, like paid media. So when somebody searches the Google ad that shows up first is XYZ sneaker company, boom, they found you. But the key here is to not ignore branded search. When I first got into SEO, I ignored branded search because I'm like, oh, that doesn't count. That's just people searching for the brand. That's not bringing us new customers because they already know. But I was wrong because branded search volume shows your popularity and overall brand health. Okay, also want to talk about conversions. Conversions is such an important metric for any e-commerce brand. And it's also important to look in your SEO, especially when we head into a year where profit is important, efficiency is important. Looking at what key words and search terms are leading to conversions is huge because you might be ranking first for a bunch of informational keywords like how to change a oil on my car or things like that, but that's all informational. And when people search that, there's a little snippet that's gonna show up that they can click, which expands and answers that question right on Google, which means they're never gonna click through to your website. Informational searches are great, for top of funnel when you're doing great. But when your goal is sales and profit, you need to focus on conversion facilitating keywords and search terms. So analyze all the data and all the search terms and make sure you're prioritizing the ones that are producing conversions and you double down on those. Create more content around those keywords, create more resources to facilitate people down that that funnel and that journey into actually buying the product or signing up for your service or uh, filling out a form if they're a lead. Next thing to look at that many people don't talk about in the SEO world is CTR, click-through rate. We talk about this all the time in the paid media space, but in the SEO world, it's oftentimes like ranking, but your click-through rate shows whether you're a potential solution to their problem. So click-through rate is simply when somebody searches for how to change oil on my car, uh, or even better yet, a transactional search might be best oil for a 2020 Toyota Tundra. If you show up and the title and the description shows that you are the best, right? Like voted number one oil for trucks or, you know, three years running best oil for trucks or something like that. Like that's the title that shows that you're providing a solution to their problem. You are the best and you're backing it up. So your click through rate can show the performance of your titles and the ultimate performance of the content where people would click through. So measuring your CTR on SEO or your rankings is a really good metric to see if you're providing a solution to common problems people have. Another metric is bounce rate. Bounce rate on your S, your website rather is showing whether your content is good. If you have a really high bounce rate, that means people come to the site and leave quickly. If your bounce rate is high, you know, 60, 70, 80, 90%, that shows that your content's not good. It's not solving their problem. Or the product, if your bounce rate is on a product, it shows that your product presentation is subpar. It's not showing that you are valuable. If your bounce rate is low, 50, 40, 30%, it shows that you've got a really great piece of content or a really great product that is solving people's problem or at least showing a lot of value. So measure the bounce rate on your more important conversion pages, your product pages, your category pages, even your blog posts where they have product listings in them. Make sure you're measuring your bounce rate and keep those bounce rates low and constantly tweak images and copy and text and, and things like that until you can get that bounce rate to a place where it's low enough showing that you're adding value to a searcher's search. All right, and finally, backlinks. So backlinks is one of the more common things that SEOs pay attention to, all right? But it also may be doing something that you're not thinking about. Most SEOs look at backlinks like, hey, the more backlinks we can have, the more relevant backlinks we have, the more it shows Google that people care about us. So that's a growth hack sort of mindset. Another way to look at it though is how popular is 
the product that you offer or your brand. Because the more relevant backlinks you have from larger, higher domain authority websites, it means your brand and your product is really valuable because these larger domain authority sites, they don't just say yes to everybody who wants a guest post or to stuff their link and their product in there. They only say yes to the ones that they think their readers are going to value and that they feel good about referencing or referring their readers to. All right. So the backlink, yes, it's good for signals, but it's also good for brand health as well as product value or presentation value. In some cases, content value, right? If the backlink is coming to a piece of content like an ebook or a video, it's showing you that what you have is really good. So looking at things like backlinks from high domain authority websites, uh, click through rate and bounce rate, these are all showing the quality of your content or your product or your service. And at the end of the day, that's what Google cares about. It cares about referring people who are searching for solutions to their problems to businesses that are going to provide those solutions to their problem. Hey, thanks for watching everybody. And don't forget to head over to my website, jtimmerman.com, where I give away a bunch of free resources. Uh, I just ask for your email uh, so that we can continue to communicate. But the free resources are things like e-commerce checklists. If you're launching a new or trying to grow your e-commerce brand, use this checklist to make sure you've got everything squared away. Uh, the top performing subject lines for our cold email outreach that we use, we update this usually on an annual basis. Those are all free over there, sample marketing plans, all that kind of stuff. So head over to my website, jtimmerman.com. You can download the, all of this stuff for free. And uh, if you want to subscribe to this channel, if you found this valuable, you can subscribe, you can share it to your colleagues, your coworkers, your friends, and we'll see you in the next video.